Okay, so this is a full summary of uh, work to do with straight line graphs. Um, just a quick starter though to get you going uh, to think about the different uh, graph functions. So we've got a curve that's uh, done the splits here, it's done the splits at zero, um, so that implies it's the reciprocal graph type. And the reciprocal graph type is always something to do with y equals 1 over something. And in this case, we'll just say it's y, over, y equals 1 over x. Uh, could be 1 over 2x and so forth, uh, positive directions. So that's going to be that one. This one's an upside down curve of the quadratic type. So classic uh, U shape, but upside down. The upside, the upside down bit suggests that it's because of the uh, negative x squared so it's reflected in the x-axis. So we know it's going to be something like y equals, um, because it's not uh, the center of the line of symmetry is not on the y-axis, it's been moved across a little bit. So although we might say negative x squared to show the flip, it's probably got something to do with adding a few x's in there. And the main thing to also remember here is that the intercept point where the curve crosses the y-axis when x is 0, um, it's a negative number. So we'd probably say something like uh, negative 3 or something. Uh, we're just trying to show that we've understood the uh, general shape is caused by a quadratic uh, function. Um, it's not uh, got a line of symmetry through the y-axis, so there must have been something else happening. So we'll say it's uh, so many axes been added on, and it's crossed at an intercept point. Um, this is a classic straight line of the form y equals mx plus c. It's going in the negative direction, so we're going to say something like y equals negative 3x, and it's crossing at a negative number here, so we'll say it's negative 5 or something. So that could be an example of the equation or the function for this straight line here. Um, this one here is a U-shape. Uh, again, it's not got the line of symmetry through uh, the y, so we'll say it's something like y equals x squared. Um, <clears throat> take away um, 2x. Again, the intercept is negative, so we'll have a negative number there, so negative 3. Uh, we're just showing again that we've understood it's got something to do with uh, the quadratic function uh, x squared. Um, and something else has happened to cause it to move um, away from the uh, y-axis. Uh, straight line, negative direction, so it's going to be y equals, say, negative 2x, going through a positive intercept uh, there, so plus 3 or something. Uh, this one, again, it's a split graph, uh, it's the uh, reciprocal hyperbola, um, but this time it's the uh, reflection of what was a graph A, so it's going to be something like y equals negative 1 over x. Um, it's going to be reverse. Um, this one has got the classic seat um, picture or an elongated S, um, so it's a cubic type. Again, it's um, got this kink in the middle, so it's not uh, going to be a straightforward just x cubed um, function. There will be something happening to it, so we'll just put some x's there to show that we know that it's uh, had something to it. Not necessarily plus 2x, but something's happened to it. And it's got an intercept point of a positive number, so plus 2. Um, straight line, so classic uh, graph going in the uh, positive direction this time, so it's going to be a positive number of x's, so say 3x, but it's going through a negative number there, so negative uh, 4, say. Again, these are just examples of the kind of uh, functions that we created these curves because they're just sketches. Um, U shape again, positive direction, uh, goes through a positive number. So y equals x squared plus so many x's and it's gone through an intercept point there of positive number, so plus 2 or something. So those are examples of the kind of functions that could apply for these ones here. Um, it's quick questions. So the questions say, what's the... Uh, equation that goes with 1 negative 3x, so that's y equals mx plus c type, so it's going to be a straight line, power 1 for the x, and it's going in the negative direction, and it's going through an intercept of positive 1. So the negative direction, um, going through an intercept of positive number, so it's going to be graph E. Uh, y equals 1 over x uh, is the reciprocal function, um, x to the minus 1, x to the power of minus 1. Um, we've already seen it's uh, graph A. And this one's a quadratic, uh, got a positive uh, intercept, and it's going in the normal shape, so it'll be a U shape. 
uh, going through a positive intercept, uh, we can see that it'll be this one here. So we'll say it's uh, graph uh, i. Okay. So that's the uh, straight line functions themselves. So let's look at a past exam question. So we've got here various straight lines going on here. So we know they're all of the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient of the graph, and c is the intercept point when x is 0. So in other words, we've got a line, generally line going like that. If that's 0, then that's your c value, and the gradient we find from for every one we go across the scale, we go up the gradient m. If it's positive, we go down the gradient uh, m if it's negative. So if it's in the negative direction, then for every one across we go, we'd actually go down m. So it'd be negative m. But the intercept point would still be where the, the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, so let's have a look at these then. So they're saying which one is y equals 2x? Well, there's no c, so c equals 0. So that suggests it's going to be line S. So A goes with S. Um, here we've got a negative gradient. So we're looking for something that goes in the negative direction. So it's going to be going in that direction. So it must be line P. So line P goes in the negative direction. Um, y equals 2x plus 3. It's going in the positive direction because it's got a positive gradient of 2. And it's got an intercept point of 3. So positive gradient going in there, there, so it must be 3 there, so that's going to be line R, and y equals 3, well there is no x, so it's um, got a gradient of 0, and gradients of 0 are horizontal lines, so it must be line Q. Okay, so the answers for those then. Question two, it says you've got to draw, it says you've got to draw the graph of y equals 2x plus 3. It's given you a um, grid and it's got the grid going from negative 2 to positive 3. Um, to draw a graph we need coordinates and because we know it's of the form y equals so many x so mx plus c, the intercept point, then we've got a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, one way is to create some quick coordinates. So we'll create the coordinates at 0, um, 1, and 3. Just choose some numbers that were on the scale across the graph paper. Now, if they don't give you the scale drawn, <coughs> then you just create a simple scale and draw the axes as you would do. Um, so let's say it says 2 times the x number, 2 times nothing, plus 3, 2 times 1, plus 3, 2 times 3, plus 3. So those give us some coordinates. So this one gives us the coordinate 0, 3. This one gives the coordinate of 1, 5. And this one gives the coordinates of 3, 9. So all we did to get those coordinates were we followed the rule. So double the x number plus 3 to get the y number. So double 3 plus 3, double 1 plus 3, double 0 plus 3. Um, we've got the coordinates, so we could plot those on the graph. So 0, 3, uh, 1, 5 and 3, 9. So we get our ruler and because they've given us a graph that goes uh, from negative 2 to positive 3 we draw the line not just through the three points we drew but across the whole graph paper. Because technically this line goes on forever and it's the same gradient all the time. So that's how we would draw the graph. Uh, the alternative method is to recognize from the general equation that this says mx plus c. c is the intercept point when x is 0. So we could have plotted 0, 3 straight away, because that tells us that we've got the coordinate 0, 3 on the graph straight away. Uh, the gradient of 2, well, that tells me that for every 1 on the scale I go across, I go up 2. So that's what the gradient is telling me. For every 1 I go across, I go up 2. So I could have started at the intercept point gone across one on the scale, it's not just one square remember guys, it's one across on the scale, there's the one. So one across and then two up on the y-axis, so one, two, because this is going up in ones. And then again, so I could have gone one across, two up, I could have gone one across, two up, one across, two up. So I could have um, drawn my gradient uh, by doing the uh, idea of one across to cover the gradient, 
intercept point. So that's another way to do it. Okay, it then says use your graph to solve uh, these things. So we're going to do it when x is negative 1.3. So we recognize the scale up here is 0 0.1 for thing. So we should use a ruler, of course, guys, but just doing this quickly. So the scale going up here is 0.2s. So the answer there will be 0 0.4. It then asks you to get the graph value of x when y is 5.4. So we find 5.4 on our scale and we come across to our graph line and we come down. Again, should use your ruler guys to make sure it's all neatly lined up. Uh, we get an answer of 1.2. So the answers for question 3 uh, were 0 0.4 and 1.2. So, on this graph, it uh, wants you to draw y equals 2x take away 3, use the values of that. Well, as we saw before, um, this has got an intercept point of negative 3, so we put that there. The 2 is telling me that for every 1 across on the scale, I go up 2 on the y scale. So, the gradient function being the uh, difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates, 1 over 2. So. We go one across on the scale, so that's going to be to there. Then we come two up on the y scale, so another point will be there. One across on the x scale, two up on the uh, y scale, another point there. So we get our ruler and we draw through those three points accurately. All the way across the graph because we want to make sure we get four marks. And it's told us to use from negative two to positive two. So we go all the way across to there. Okay, so that's how we draw that graph fairly quickly. Uh, because it's a linear graph, y equals m x plus c applies. The gradient uh, is the coefficient of x, the number of x's. It tells me I go one across two up. If it were something like y equals negative um, 3x um, plus 1, then I'd be starting at 1 on the y intercept. I'd still be coming across 1, but this time the negative tells me to go 1 across on the scale, but come down 3. 1 across on the scale, come down 3. And then I'd draw, so 1 across, 3 down, 1 across, 3 down, and then I'd plot my 3 points wherever I start from, plus the extras, and then I'd draw on a straight line. Okay. So this next question talks about um, a straight line has equation y equals 5x negative 3. So again, we think of the straight line general uh, equation, which is y equals mx plus c. It says write down the gradient. Well, the gradient is always the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is 5 in this case. Uh, then it says write down the coordinate of the point where the straight line crosses. Well, that's always the intercept point. So wherever c, uh, the c value is on the y-axis, that's going to be the coordinate. So in this case, they're telling you that the line goes in that direction and it's got an intercept point of negative 3. So the coordinate there will be not negative 3. So not negative 3. Okay, so this next question says um, some straight lines and we've got to write down the letter of the line that is parallel to y equals x plus 6. Well, parallel uh, means that the same gradients. So m will be the same value. So this has got a gradient of 1, so m equals 1, there's only 1x one there. So I need something else that's got just 1x. Well, we can see that that is equation r, or a function r. It then says, write down the letter of the line that is perpendicular to y equals 2x take away 1. Well, that word perpendicular tells me that I take the gradient of line 1, I times it by the gradient of line 2, and the answer should be negative 1. So the product of the two gradients for perpendicular lines must always equal negative 1. So the gradient of line 1 is 2, so we're saying 2 times the gradient of line 2 equals negative 1. So the gradient of line 2 is equal to negative 1 over 2. Move the 2 over by dividing, so it's negative a half. So we're looking for a gradient of negative a half. So that's positive a half, and that one's negative a half, so it must be line S. It says find the coordinates of the point where the line y equals 2x plus 5 cuts the y-axis, cuts the x-axis. Well, when it cuts the y-axis, 
then we know that x is equal to 0. So it's 2x plus 5, so we know it's going to be doing something like that, where it intercepts at 5. And when it's x equals 0, then it's going to be at that point there. And the y-axis is cut at 5, so the coordinate will be 0, 5. Then it wants to know where the line cuts the x-axis. Well, that's going to be there. So for this one, we're looking for that point there. At that point, y equals 0. So at this point, y equals 0. So from the equation y equals 2x plus 5, we say 0 equals 2x plus 5. And then we solve that equation in the usual way, so subtract 5 from both sides, so we've got negative 5 equals 2x, so that was by subtracting 5 from both sides. And then we can divide by 2 because we want to know what x is, so divide by 2 gives me negative 5 over 2 equals x. So it says what's the coordinate, so we must remember that means we write down the x value, so negative 5 2 over 2, 0. Now, if we put negative two and a half there, not a problem. So the same answer. So what's the called the equivalent answer? Okay, so that's how we can uh, do uh, that kind of question. The next question talks about a line passing through the coordinates and is perpendicular. So again, we've got that rule to remember: the product of the two gradients is equal to negative one, and we've been given an equation two x plus three. So a quick sketch will give us a feel for what's going on. So it's a positive gradient going through 3. Uh, we've got a point for 7 somewhere. So if we use this rule with the x coordinate of 4, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So 4, 11, 4, 11 is on this line. So 4, 7 will be down here somewhere. So basically it's telling us that we've got a perpendicular line to that original line. So this was the line y equals 2x plus 3. We've got a perpendicular line uh, crossing through this coordinate of 4, 7. So what we need to do is we need to look at uh, the rule, work out the gradient of this line. So we know so far that this line must be of the form y equals mx plus c. What we're trying to do is find out the value of the gradient and then the value of the intercept. So in other words, where does this line cross. So that's the kind of picture of what's going on. So let's have a look at the first part. Well we know the rule says that we've multiplied two gradients. So we know the gradient of the first line was 2x. So we know we're doing 2 times something to give us negative 1. So that something must be negative a half. So far then we know that y equals negative a half x plus c. But they gave us a coordinate. They said that this perpendicular line must have the coordinate 4, 7 on it. So therefore, this rule must work for this coordinate. So whatever we multiply uh, x, the x uh, value by, we must get 7. So we remember that uh, a coordinate has got an x number and a uh, y number. So we replace each of those uh, in the uh, equation of uh, the line. And we can see then we've got 7 equals negative 2 plus c. Take the uh, negative 2 over. So this tells us then that c is going to be 9. So the answer for this one then is y equals negative a half x plus 9. Okay, now when you do your A-level work guys, what the examiner would love you to do is double everything to end up with no fractions involved. Um, we don't like negative uh, x's so we tend to put them on the other side. So for A-level they'd expect you to see 2y plus x equals 18. Okay, so we'd make everything as positive as we can and get the fractions out of the way. Okay, so that's uh, how you can do that kind of question with perpendicular lines. So we've got another question then, which is now talking about a graph with a line already drawn. It's asking us to find the equation of the line that passes through C and is parallel to AB. So in other words, we're looking for a line that's going to be doing something like that. It's going to be parallel to it, so they're both parallel, and they're saying to us find the equation of that line. So we need to know the equation of AB first, because parallel suggests that the two gradients will be the same. So we know that um, A to B, well, we know it crosses, so let's have a look. So we've got Y equals MX plus C for line AB. Well, we know the C value is negative 2, so we know it's going to be negative 2. 
and we know that the gradient function is for every one across the x scale wherever you meet the line going down then that tells you it's a down movement so it's going to be negative 1 so the gradient is going to be negative 1 so this is going to be y equals negative x take away 2 so that's the equation for AB, the equation of the line. Um, if you weren't sure about that and you've learnt another way of calculating gradients, then of course you can't. You, sh you might remember that there is a rule for the gradient. Uh, the gradients are the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. Some people uh, think of it as the rise over the run that was created by drawing a right angle triangle on the picture. So we could have drawn a right angle triangle going from there to there. And the run would have been a negative um, because we've got the difference in the x coordinates. So we could have found the gradient by saying that we're going to work between the coordinates of 0, negative 2, and the coordinate of negative 3, 1. So those are the two coordinates that uh, we chose to make the right angle triangle. And the rule says that um, we do the difference in the y coordinates. So that's going to be 1 minus negative 2. 1 minus negative 2, so we're doing 1 minus negative 2, and then we're doing negative 3 minus 0. So 1 minus minus, well, we've got um, two negative signs next to each other, two take away signs next to each other. So we add those, and negative 3, so that's going to be 3 divided by negative 3, which is negative 1. So either way, we ended up with the gradient being negative 1 whether we use the general field that for every one on the scale we go across whenever we come down or up is the gradient if it's down it's negative gradient, if it's up it's positive gradient or we uh, use the rule that says we do the difference in the y coordinates for two points on the line divided by the difference in the x coordinates for the same two points okay so we wanted to know an equation for going through c that is parallel well we've already seen that the gradient m is equal to negative 1 so for this one then, we know that the gradient is going to be negative 1x because we're talking about uh, being parallel. Um, but we can see from the graph that it crosses at the point 0, 3. So the intercept value is 3. So we're going to say plus 3. It then says find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the line um, through A and B and passes through C. So in other words, they're looking for the line that is perpendicular and is passing through C. Well, we've got to remember the rule that says that if we've got one line given to us, which is the line um, C, which we've just decided is negative x plus 3, and we want the general equation of the perpendicular line, Well, we've got to use that rule that says that if we know they're perpendicular, then the product of the two gradients must equal negative 1. Well, we know the equation as of the uh, gradient of the first function, the first line, was negative 1. So we've got negative 1 times m2 equals negative 1. Well, that tells us then that the perpendicular gradient must be 1, because that times 1 gives me that. Well, we then know that this equation is going to be y equals x because it's going to be a positive gradient and it asks for the question to go through c well c had an intercept value of 3 so c had an intercept value of 3 so we're going to say it's plus 3 so that's how we get the answer for that question by recognising the perpendicular gradients equal negative 1 and the intercept point was given to us on the graph of plus 3 Okay, so this question is asking us to work with completing this table. So this is saying take the x number, add it to the y number, and we get an answer of 6. So 0 plus 6 gives me 6, 1 plus 5 gives me 6, 2 plus 4 gives me 6, 3 plus 3 gives me 6, 4 plus 2 gives me 6, and 5 plus 1 gives me 6. So again, as so always when we're drawing graphs, the table of coordinates um, give me the actual coordinates plot. So 5, 1. 3, 3. Now as I know this is a straight line, I'm only going to plot two of them. I'm going to plot the first one at 0, 6, and I'm going to plot the end one at 5, 1. 
and then we're going to draw the line through those two points very accurately. And that's going to be the line x plus y equals 6. So this next question uh, talks about a straight line. Uh, it has this um, equation y equals that. Find the gradient. Well, we need it in the form y equals mx plus c. So we need to multiply this uh, bracket out. So y equals 6 take away 8x. Um, the coefficient in front of x, the number in front of x, tells us the gradient. So this is a negative 8. So find the gradient of the straight line. Well, it's going to be negative 8 because the m value is negative 8 in front of the x. It then goes on and says a straight line has equation y equals 5. Take away 3x, write down the gradient of the line. Um, we've already done this question, so I'll duplicate it again, but never mind. Um, so y equals mx plus c, the general equation of all straight lines, m being the gradient, so it's the number in front of the x, so the number in front of the x is negative 3, so that's going to be negative 3. Um, the coordinates of the intercept point, well the intercept point is going to be a negative direction, it's going through 5, so that's the, what the, equation, the line would look like roughly. Um, the intercept point is at 5, it wants the coordinates, so the coordinate at that point is 0, 5. Okay, so this question is asking us to find the coordinates of the midpoint of AB. Well, there's a little rule that says you add up the two coordinates and then half the result to get the midpoint. So if we add those up, then we get 10, 7, and then if we divide by 2, it gives us the coordinates of the midpoint, which will be 5. 3.5. Um, the other way of doing it, of course, is just imagine where it is and work out halfway along there and halfway along there, and then that would give you the same idea 5 and 3.5. And so, this next uh, part of the question says we've been given an equation straight line through AB, so they told us what this um, equation is. It says write down the equation of another straight line that is parallel. Well, that must have the same gradient, so we know this is going to start with a half x. Uh, if it's parallel to it, uh, we could just leave it as a half x, because um, that will be parallel. It'll just go through 0 as the intercept point. Um, but I'm just going to put plus 3. Could have been plus any number, could have been take away any number. Um, it's the coefficient of x that tells us the gradient, and as they're the same, they'll be parallel. It then says write down the equation of another straight line that passes through the point. 0, 1. So it wants an equation of another straight line that passes through the point 0, 1. So 0, 1 is there. So it just wants an equation of any line that goes through that point. So from y equals mx plus c, we know that value is 1. So we know it's going to end in plus 1. Um, it says any equation. So basically um, we can say it's any number of x's that we like. So 3x plus 1 will go through the intercept point of 1. So this question uh, talks about um, a straight line passing through these two coordinates, find the equation of the straight line. So if we just quickly sketch what that looks like, so it's going to go through 0, 5, and it's going to go through 3, 17. So we know we've got something like that going on, 3, 17, and it's a straight line. So basically, we've got two coordinates given to us, so if we can work out what the gradient of that line is, we know the intercept point already, then we can work out this equation. So the gradient equals the change in the y-coordinates divided by the change in the x-coordinates. So in other words, the rise and the run. So we've got two coordinates given to us. So the change in the y-coordinates, well, that's 17 take away 5. So 17 take away 5. And the change in the x-coordinates is 3 take away 0. So 3 take away 0. So 17 take away 5 is 12, 3 take away 0 is 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this graph has a gradient of 4 and it has an intercept point of 5. And we know we need those values because of the general equation y equals mx plus c. So we know that that value is 4 and we know the c value was 5. So the answer for this question is y equals 4x plus 5. Now we should do a check because if this was the equation of the line, 
then the coordinate 317, that tells me the x value and the y value. So when x is 3, y equals 4 times 3, because we're just replacing the x in the uh, function value. So 4 times 3 plus 5, that equals 17. So we can be happy that the rule we found seems to work. So again, we should always be doing that check. So here we've got a straight line that has equation. Work out the gradient of this line. Well, we know the general equation is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the intercept point. So for every one across the scale, we go up the gradient. And so therefore, we're going to rearrange this to be y equals mx plus c. So we've got 4y take away 5x equals t. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides first. So negative 5x plus 5x is 0. So that gives me 4y equals 2 plus 5x. And then we're going to divide by 4, because I know what 4y's are. 4 times y, the opposite of times is dividing. So we're going to divide by 4. So we end up with 2 quarters plus 5 quarters of x. Just tidy up the 2 quarters, because we know that's a half. And 5 quarters of x. Now the gradient is the coefficient of x, so it's the number in front of the x, and the number in front of this x is positive 5 quarters, so the gradient will be 5 quarters, or 1.35 if for decimals. Uh, this one says find the gradient of the straight line with the equation 5y equals 3 take away 2x. Well again, we have to remember, it's really important, we need a single y equals mx plus c. This has given us what the answer is for 5y's. So we don't fall into the trap of just putting negative 2, thinking it's always the number in front of x. It is the number in front of x, the coefficient of x, when y is a single value, so a single 1 on y. So in this case, we need to divide everything by 5. So that gives me y equals 3 fifths. 3 divided by 5 is 3 fifths. Take away 2 divided by 5, which is 2 fifths, and x. Don't have to work out what 2 fifths is, remember guys? We can leave answers as fractions. Um, the gradient is the uh, coefficient of x, the number in front of x. In this case, it's negative 2 fifths, so the answer will be negative 2 fifths. Okay, so <coughs> a straight line um, has equation 2y take away 6x equals 5. All straight lines have to have a function y equals mx plus c. So we're going to go through this and make this into a single y. So first thing we're going to do is add 6x to both sides. So 5 plus 6x. And then we're going to divide by 2. So y equals 5 over 2 plus 3x. It asks you to find the gradient of the line. That's the coefficient of x is a positive 3. So the gradient will be 3. Uh, it says the point k6 lies on this line. So find the value of k. So k 6 is telling me that the y value is 6. This is telling me I need to find the x value. So we've got the equation y equals 5 over 2 plus 3x. Well, we know the value of y is 6, so it's y equals 5 over 2 plus 3x. So I rearrange this till I get the value of x. So we're going to take away 5 over 2. Well, 5 over 2 is 2 and a half. Uh, 6 take away 2.5 is 3.5, so we've got 3.5 equal to 3x, um, 3 over 2, 3.5 so three is 7 over 2, so we've got 7 over 2 equals 3x, 7 over 2 equals 3x, so I'm going to divide by 3, so I'm doing 7 over 2 divided by 3 equals x, well that's the same as doing 7 over 2 times 1 third, uh, and when you do division with fractions, then this was the same as doing 7 over 2 divided by 3 over 1. Integers uh, over 1 as a fraction. And then we do the times in with the reciprocal of the second fraction. So it becomes 7 over 6. So k is 7 sixths. Okay. Now if I want to check that works, then of course I could try the original equation. So I could do a check. So the original equation said 2y take away 6x equals 5. So I think the x value when y is 6. So we've got 2 times 6 take away 6 times 7 over 6. Um, 2 times 6 is 12. 6 times 7 is 42 divided by 6 is 7. And 12 take away 7 is equal to 5. So the check worked. 
So again, if we've got unknown values, then we ask ourselves, what do we know? Well, we know the y value is 6. We know the equation of the line that this is going through is 5 over 2 plus 3x. Replace the values we know, rearrange it until we get the value of x. And that was the answer, 7 over 6. So this next question uh, talks about a straight line L as equation. So this one has equation y equals a half x plus 7. So that means it crossed at 7. It says the straight line M is parallel to L and passed through the point 0 3. So it's telling us what the intercept value is. So we know that Y equals MX plus C. So we now know that we've got MX plus 3 because uh, they told us that the intercept point was at 3. It says write down the equation of the line M. Well, they gave us a clue that M is parallel to L. So that means they've got the same gradient. So Y must equal a half X plus 3. So y equals a half x plus 3. Okay, so this next question says a straight line has equation like that. The point P lies on the straight line. So in other words, we've got a straight line that's going through 1. It's got a gradient uh, that's positive, so it's going to be doing that. It says the point P lies on a straight line. P has a y coordinate of 5, so it's going to be up there somewhere. So that's the point P, and that's 5. And it says find the x-coordinate. Well, if it's uh, on this line, then it must use this rule. So we know that 5 equals a half x plus 1. So we rearrange this. So double everything first to get rid of the fraction half. So 10 equals x plus 2. So I've times everything by 2 to cancel the fraction out. And then we take away the 2 from both sides, and so x equals 8. So that value would be 8. Check it. A half of 8 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So that's going to be 8. Write down the equation of a different straight line that is parallel. Uh, well, parallel means the same gradient, so the number in front of x is the gradient, so it's going to be a half x again. And it says a different straight line, so plus any number we like. Could have left it at zero, of course. Um, it then says rearrange y equals a half x plus one to make x the subject. Well, we go through the usual strategies. Take one from both sides. So y take away one equals a half x, and then we double this side to get rid of the half. So we get two y take away two equals x. So x equals two y take away two. Um, we could have doubled everything first, so that would have given us 2y and 2. Take away the 2, so 2y take away 2 leaves us with the x. Okay, so this question is asking us to rearrange the equation 6y plus to make y the subject. Um, might be because they want it to be y equals for a straight line. So we're going to make y the subject, so we're going to take away 5x first, so 6y is going to be 15, take away 5x. Uh, we're then going to divide by 6, so y equals, well 15 divided by 6 is 2.5, and, and 5 divided by 6, well we leave it as 5 sixths x. So rearrange the equation to make uh, y the subject, well it's y equals 2.5, take away 5 sixths of x. It says the point negative 21k lies on the line. Find the value of k. Well, in this case, they're saying negative 21k. So we've got um, an x number and a y number. So from the equation that uh, we had to, when we rearrange this, then we're going to say that k, replace the y with k, is equal to 2.5, take away 5 sixths times negative 21. Okay, so k equals 2.5 take away, well, it's minus something times minus something, so it's going to end up with a plus. And we've got 5 sixths of 21. Well, 21 divided by 6 is 3.5. So I've got 21 divided by 6 is 3.5, but I want 5 of those. So 5 3 and a half is 17.5. Uh, so that's 17.5, so k is going to equal 20, so k equals 20. Uh, remember how we do that guys, the coordinate tells me some x numbers and y numbers. We've got an equation that tells me to get the y number, I can do 2.5 take away 5 6 of the x number. We knew the x number was negative 21, so we put that in, 
being careful to recognize we've got a negative times a negative which gave us a plus here and therefore we add those two together to get 20. So negative 21, 20. Now if we wanted to check that that um, works then of course our check would be to say that the original equation was 6 lots of y, so that's 6 lots of 20 plus 5 lots of the x number which is negative 21 so we've got 120 um, take away because positive times negative is take away um, 5 times 21 is 105 that gave us an answer of 15 and we can see from the original equation that that should have given us 15 it did so we know the check worked um, last part of this question says on the grid shade the region that satisfies these points well they've already drawn this line for us so the values have to be less than 15 so they drew that line so if the values have to be less than 15 then we shade out above the line we shade out the regions that doesn't give us the answers for here this is telling us we want the answers below the line so we shade out above the line so there's the first thing we can do shade out above the line it then says uh, we've got these um, equations so we've got y is bigger than zero so we look at the line y equals zero which is just the x-axis and it says you want to be bigger than zero so we shade out below the line the next one says x is going to be bigger than zero so we consider the uh, limiting line as x equals zero any side of that is <coughs> excuse me any side of that is going to be valid if it's bigger than any side less so we know we're going to shade out this bit here and this one says that 2x has got to be less than 3 so divide by 2 so x has got to be less than 1.5 so we draw the line x equals 1.5 well x equals lines are x equals 1.5 so x equals lines are vertical so we know this line is going to be vertical and although the uh, exam board draw, drew this with a solid line um, technically yeah when you've got just less than, you should draw them as dotted lines um, to show that the actual values on the line don't count. So that's the line x equals one and a half. Now it's saying that we want the values to be less than. So it says here that the values are going to be less than one and a half. So we shade out what is bigger than one and a half. So the last part of the question says um, label this region R. So that's the region R, so that's what the answer should be like. Everything shaded out, that doesn't count. Left with a blank in here, which is all the values that do count, and the region R. And it says P is a point in the region R. The coordinates of P are both integers. Write down the coordinates of P. Well, it says they're going to be integers, so that's whole numbers. So when we look at here, the whole number 1. So we've got the whole number 1, um, there's the integer coordinate on 1, um, this coordinate is in but it's a half, not an integer. So the only coordinate that works is that one there, so that is the coordinate of P, so it's 1, 1. So the answer here will be 1, 1. Okay, so that's all the question there. Okay, so the next question. It talks about the straight line L has equation y equals to three. L2 is parallel to it. The straight line L2 passes through the point finding the equation. So if we sketch out a little picture of what's going on, so they're telling us that it's going through the point three, it's a positive gradient, and that's L1. Uh, y equals two x plus three. They're telling us that L2 is a parallel line, so it's going to the same gradient, and it passes through the point three, two. So 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. So 3, 2 will be below this line and it's going to be parallel. So we know that L2 is parallel and goes through the coordinate 3, 2. If it's parallel, then we know it has the same gradient. So if they had a gradient of 2, this one has a gradient of 2. So we know this line starts with 2x plus some number. So we've got y equals 2x plus some number. Well, they gave us a coordinate for a reason because this tells me an x number and a y number that must be on the line. So we can put those numbers into this to find out the value of c. So the y number was 2, the x number was um, 3, 
So plus c, so 2 equals 6 plus c, so c equals negative 4. Take away 6 from both sides, then we end up with 0 there. 2 take away 6 is negative 4, so c is that. So our equation is y equals 2x take away 4. So this line was actually not there, it was down here somewhere. Okay, because that would have been negative 4. But that's how that question can be done, by taking the information step by step, recognising that the gradients are the same for parallel lines. We've been given a coordinate, put those numbers into the into the equation, and then we can find out the value of c that's missing. So our answer here, y equals 2x, take away 4. Check it works, of course. 3, 2 must lie on the line. 2, 3 is a 6. Take away 4 equals 2. The y coordinate was 2. Okay, so this question's uh, got a picture of a rectangle and it's telling us some uh, points. So it's telling us the inset point there is 6, the inset point there is 1, and it's saying the equation of straight line through A and B is y equals 2x plus 1. So basically uh, the line AB, so this is y equals 2x plus 1. And it says find the equation of the line straight um, going through D and C. Well, D and C, being a rectangle, are parallel. So this is parallel to a, B. So we know then that the equation must start with y equals 2x and DC goes through 6 on the y-axis so it has an intercept point of 6. So y equals 2x plus 6. Now we knew that because of the general equation y equals mx plus c. Parallel, same gradient and so forth. Now it says find the equation of the straight line through B and C. Well we know that B and C is perpendicular to AB. So it's perpendicular and DC of course. So it's perpendicular to DC. Now I'm going to use DC because I know where um, BC has an inset point. I know its inset point is 6. So Y equals MX plus C. We know the rule for perpendicular lines is the group two gradients multiplied together must give me an answer of negative 1. Well, the line AB has a gradient of 2, so we know that 2 times the one we need is negative 1. Divide by 2 to get the gradient is negative a half. So we know then that this is going to be y equals negative a half x, because that's the perpendicular gradient. And we knew the intercept point, because the line BC went through 6, is going to be plus 6. So that's going to be the equation of the straight line through B and C because we recognise that the two lines were perpendicular. AB and DC were both perpendicular. Okay, it says on this bit, it is always possible to draw a circle which passes through all the so Explain why. Well, fairly simple fact, guys. We know that every angle in the corners of a, or the vertices of a rectangle is 90 degrees, so therefore the opposite angles in a rectangle add up to 360 degrees, uh, sorry, 360 degrees, 180 degrees, and cyclic quadrilaterals, so cyclic quadrilaterals opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So basically we had to recognize that the uh, cyclic quadrilateral would work there. And the center of the circle is where the two diagonals cross each other. So you draw your diagonals on a rectangle, put the center point down where the two diagonals intersected, um, open your compasses up to there, and you'll find that you'll always get a circle and go through those four vertices. 22, a straight line has the point P, da, 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 find the coordinates of P, and uh, straight line, find the equation of L, and uh, goes through 3, 4. Um, I think we've already done this one, but we'll do it quickly again. Um, let's look at a straight line, uh, point P, so it has a Y coordinate of negative 4, so we know that negative 4 equals 2X take away 3, because we replace that in the equation that was given. Add 3 to both sides, so that's going to be negative 1 equals 2X, so x must be negative a half 
and it's different value. Okay, um, so basically we was given a function, we was told the value of y, um, so y equals negative 4 there, put it into the equation, and then we can rearrange to get the value of x. It says the straight line is parallel to this and passes through the point 3, 4, find the equation. Well, the general equation is y equals mx plus c. If they're parallel, then we know that means that they have the same gradient. So the same gradient uh, means that we've got y equals 2x plus something. And it goes through the point 3, 4. So this is telling me that when x is 3, y will equal 4. So 4 equals 2 times 3 plus c. 4 equals 6 plus c. Take away 6 from both sides. So we have negative 2 equals c. So our equation is y equals um, 2x. Take away 2. Okay. Put a tick under the equation that is straight line is perpendicular to this one. Well, perpendicular, the two gradients multiplied to make negative 1. So the product of the two gradients is negative 1. Um, or you can think of it as a negative reciprocal. So we know the gradient of the first line was 2. So 2 times the other gradient is negative 1. So the other gradient must be negative half. So we need something that's got y equals negative half x plus c. So when we look at these, not that one, we can see negative half x there. Not that one, that's positive. Not that one, not that one. It says put a tick under the one that works. So it's that one there. Okay, so we've got um, this equation that find the equation of L. So L is this one. Well, we know from y equals mx plus c that the intercept point is there, which has got a value of 5. So we know, know, we know already that this has got a value of y equals mx plus c. So all we need to do is work out the gradient of that line. Well, they've given us no other information about that line but they're telling us that the two lines are parallel. So if I work out the gradient of AB, and the rule for the gradient is the change in the y-coordinates divided by the change in the x-coordinates. So we're looking for the change in the y-coordinates. So we've got negative 1, take away 5. So I've taken the y-coordinates from the coordinates of the graph. So negative 1, take away negative 5. And because I've done it in that order, I do the same with this order. So we've got 2, take away negative 1. So 2, take away negative 1. So we've got negative 1, take away negative 5, which is negative 6. We've got 2 plus, yep, negative, negative makes plus. So that's positive 3. And negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So we have a gradient here of negative 2. So from here, then, we know that we can replace we can replace the gradient with negative 2. So y equals negative 2x plus 5. So the next question says that the line m is perpendicular to AB and passes through 0, 0. So it's perpendicular. So it's going a line, going through there, going through AB at 90 degrees. Well, the rule says that um, the two gradients multiplied to the perpendicular lines must equal negative 1. The product of the two gradients is negative 1. Or we take the negative reciprocal. Um, we know the gradient of the first line is negative 2. So we've got negative 2 times the other gradient gives us negative 1. So rearrange this by dividing uh, by negative 2. So we end up with negative 1 divided by negative 2, which gives us positive a half. Negative divided by negative is positive. So it says, find the equation of the line m. Well, they've told us that it went through the uh, coordinate 0, 0. So this tells me the intercept value, which is c, is equal to 0. So this is just going to be y equals a half x. Nothing to add on the end. And it's uh, the line that works. So that's a run through of lots of different questions on straight line graphs and perpendicular lines. Hopefully it's useful.